What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is good to see you here today on the Speak and See channel. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe as we're going over idle grants again today. What do you know? What's new? We are trying to expose the reasons for you not getting that full $10,000 idle grant in your account yet, as promised. It should be as easy as a stimmy, my friends. It should be as easy as a stimmy. They go to legislation, they sign the bill, and you get your money. You know what? They've probably wasted about $200 billion. They could have actually given you $20,000, $30,000 in idle grants from the money they lost in fraud. But they're trying to claim that that fraud is partly you. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit of this today. We're going to ask for um, a little bit of attention from the SBA Administrator Guzman and a little bit of, of attention on Jackie Rosen today because those seem to be the forerunners. But I, I want to give you a quick note, Guzman. We all saw Carranza take the wheel with Mnuchin and go get this done. And let me tell you this about, let me just explain to you, Guzman. I, I just want, to, want you to know. Schumer is not very good for your political career, and he is only going to do what's good for his political career. Cardin does not have your back on this, and he is wanting to control you, and I think you have more control than you know, Guzman. You have more control than Cardin and Schumer and those other people in that tunnel of um, unawareness of the small business of America. They don't know. You are in charge now, Miss Guzman. There are things that you can do that they don't want you to do and they don't want you to think you can do but guzman you have more power than you know um last year rosen led the 4227 bill and it was it was in there from for eight months up until this new year when she had to make a new one because nothing has gotten done under cardin's and schumer's administration um you need to move them you need to take the driver's seat Guzman, you need to take the driver's seat uh, because their GPS is not going to the, the needs and the wants of the small businesses. It's going into a political realm that carries them away from the reality of what's really happening to the, the businesses that did not get that idle grant, that shut their doors in good faith to, uh, to, for the safety of the American people. And many of them are still practicing the, that safety, those issues with COVID, and we need to in, embrace that um your hands you're feeling like your hands are tied guzman they're not as tight as you think they are go to jackie rosen push her some more jackie rosen 95 percent of businesses in nevada are small businesses you said that um you should be livid i've seen your state and it's yellow as far as who gets what in that map that they made which makes no sense your state is practically all yellow you should be going nuts right now i saw that you had 820 jackie rosen you have 820 small businesses that have gotten the idle grants i think there's more than 820 small businesses in nevada i really do and if that's all the small businesses that they're showing that have gotten the ten thousand dollar idle grants you're in trouble. You're in trouble and your the small business owners of your state are not happy. I guarantee it. And Cardin and Schumer are not helping you. You need to put your foot down because you've got just as much right, if not more, than Cardin and Schumer do over this issue. So Rosen, The Rock, Rosen, Jackie, come on. Let's get with it. Um, so those are a few things that we're going to touch on today. And here's what I would love to show the American people, because here I am. I would like to expose what's going on today. About, or, or it doesn't even have to be today. What's going on this week? Because S513 is not on the floor. There must be more important subjects to, to handle, right? That's what we would think. Well, there must be some very, very serious things going on right now for us not to be getting our idle grant on the floor because that's very serious. People are going out of businesses every day. Right now, as we speak, people are going out of businesses because they reneged on their promise. Let me go up here. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you people out there what your senators and congressmen are doing today in the Senate. The things that really matter, the things that are timely, the things that people put you first, the voter. Let's see what they're doing for you, okay? How about we go over here? If, if y'all go to uh, congress.gov, 
you can get here and this is what I do. I, I try to v feed you this valuable information and how to uh, manage this yourself. So when you want, when you want to know something, you know, I want to give you that education and information that you need to go find out the information, what your congressmen and senators are doing. Go to congress.gov. Right under over here, you'll see recent. Okay, you see that? Now let's go to committee schedule. Let's go see what they're up to. You click on that. Wow, look at that. It gives us the meetings for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 5th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It gives us the meetings and what's going on in our, uh, in our Congress, okay? So we would think that priorities, priorities, priorities. Let's get these priorities straight. And, and what we're talking about here is billions and billions of dollars that should be going out to the American small businesses should be a priority over almost anything. But let's see what they're doing. How about we do, we do that? Let's see what they're up to today. Let's call them out. Yeah, let's make sure they're doing their job. Let's make sure they're in office for a reason. Because I have senators in Florida that I would like to know, what are you doing today? Why have you not given the idle grants to the people here in Florida, the small businesses? You've, you've checked them out with, with, with locations and you're not giving them their... I, I've seen only 8,000 Floridians, a little over 8,000 Floridians have gotten the full $10,000 grants. That's ridiculous. I know there's more than 8,000 businesses. There's almost more than 8,000 businesses here in Tampa. We could triple that, I believe, in my location. So let's see this promise that you made. I want to see what you're up to. Let's go to Thursday. Show more. I'm going to go click on show more. I want details. What are you doing tomorrow? I want to know. Tomorrow, the House Appropriations has a U.S. Secret Service operationals priorities. Okay, I, I admit that's pretty, that's pretty important. Okay, but is it more important than the small business that just went out right up? Oh, there goes another one. Is it more important than that? Or is this something that could have waited for another week? I think it could have waited as far as I'm concerned because, hey, my electricity's going off. And I know a couple of other people who <laughs> can't pay their bills as well. House of Veteran Affairs, you're, they're dealing with the veterans. I got that. Uh, infrastructure, well, an unlimited potential meets limited resources, benefits, and challenges of high-speed rail and emerging rail technologies. Come on, you're going to go waste some time on that for today instead of giving us our grants. Instead of going to the floor and taking a vote. That could have waited. People are going out of business. This could have waited. Wait, I want to get down here. National Science Foundation. Okay, well, that's in the science and technology. Oh, uh, natural resource is a member hearing day. A member hearing day. You could be, you're talking about a member hearing. What are y'all going to get together for some tea? And, and talk about what? You're not talking about S513. You're not talking about my grant, apparently. You're not talking about 5 million people who have been dissed on the grants, are you? No. Because if you were, you could do your member hearing in the Senate and talk about our grants. How about that? Put it on a vote and give us our money. What else we got? What's next on the agenda? Oversight and reform. That's definitely what we need is oversight and reform. What are you talking about? Birthing while... What? Birthing while black. Examining America's black maternal health crisis? What? Hold on. Hold on. What? Oh my gosh, I don't want to laugh at this because I don't know anything about it. So maybe it's true. What's going on here? Birthing while black, examining America's uh, maternal health crisis, oversight and reform. Okay, well, if you ever want to click on anything, if you want to read it, you can go to the memo over here in PDF and click the PDF and look at that. We, we, it, it comes right up. Let's check this out. Birthing while black. I did not know that there's white people out there saying that they can birth better than black people. That's what it sounds like to me. That sounds like this is discrimination against black people. Oh, you're, you're black and you can't birth? Your birthing is worse than white people? This sounds like a scam. What they're, what they're going over right now, instead of our grants, getting them out there on the floor, is a birthing while black, examining America's black maternal health crisis. And I don't want to downplay this because it, there may be families out there that have, have you know, gone through some crazy times, some black families that have, have not been able to do, have lost children in the, in the rooms and, and, and God bless the children of this world. And I know with some white people here that have gone through the same things and, and just uh, have had miscarriages 
upon miscarriages. And, it, and I don't want to downplay the, the importance of this, but I, I do think that it's something that could have waited because I've never heard of it, heard of this. And I don't see a whole bunch of people protesting to, I want to read about this though. I do want to know about this. Uh, Birthing while black examining America's Thursday, May 6, uh, 2021 committee hearing hold a hybrid room in 2514 of Ray Byrne house office building with the zoom platform examine the maternal mortality and morbidity crisis experienced by black birthing people in America. It's a crisis. Black birth birthing is a crisis. Really? Across the United States, black birthing people are disproportionate ri at a disproportionate risk of death and adverse health outcomes before, during, and after pregnancy. This public health crisis is rooted in America's historical and ongoing legacy of structural racism and manifests itself today in racial disparities inside and outside of birth settings. What is outside and inside of birth settings? So they're saying that racism, they're, they're saying that people that are, what is the KKK? Doing the, who's doing this? Because you're not talking about me. You're not talking about me. I'm not racist. You're not talking about the, the, I don't know any racists. That's just it. I don't know any. What are they talking about? How are white people making it, making black people birth worse? I think they are throwing, I, this is ridiculous. It's freaking, I'm calling it what it is. It's ridiculous. Black birthing people are three times more likely to experience pregnancy-related death than their white counterparts, and they experience higher rates of pregnancy complications, infant loss, miscarriage across the board. The coronavirus pandemic has disproportionately harmed black people in the United States and worsened pre-existing health disparities. I get that. I get that, that the coronavirus may have had something to do because black people get the coronavirus easier for some reason than the white people. I get that, but it's not due to racism. I don't get that. The purpose of this hearing is to examine how America's historical and ongoing structural racism against black people is the root cause of America, America's black maternal mortality. Come on. This is what they're talking about. Um, and, and it goes on to say, uh, let, me, let me just keep going because I didn't see that it keeps going there. Uh, black people is the root cause of America's maternal mortality crisis and to evaluate the need for comprehensive reforms and investments at the federal level to ensure health and prosperity of black mothers and black families in the United States. Oh, I agree with giving the black families all the health, any color family, white, black, you, you name it. If they need more help because they are, are get, having miscarriages because they're black, hook them up. It's a very crucial, I get that. It's very important. A crisis, I don't know, um, but... But blaming it on racism, blaming this on racism, it takes it out of the area it needs to go. And also, I, I need to know, I, I, I have a lot of black subscribers and we love you all. And I would love, I love the white guys too and the girls. I love you all. It don't matter what your color is. But I would like to know specifically from the black community out there, is this a big issue? I've never heard of it. And I'm not asking because I'm, I'm trying to be insensitive towards it I, i'm trying to be very sensitive towards this is this a big issue in the black community that racism has caused you to miscarriage i would love a testimony or two i've never heard one i don't know what they're talking about it throws me for a loop that they are I, they're, they're coming up with something that i've never heard of and putting it out there and having a meeting over this instead of when five million businesses are going under who I guarantee you, two million of them are are minorities and black and people of color. Over two million, maybe. I don't know the the statistics of the colors. I don't care the st stats of the colors. But I do know that they're going out of business, and this is on the floor. Something that nobody in maybe today's watching this has ever even heard of. That's what I'm saying. Their objectives are wrong. What they're doing here has nothing to do with the reality of Americans. In, in need of the money right now in the small business when they promised you that $10,000 grant. Where do they come up with this stuff? What else are they doing? Let's find out because I mean, 
This is just throwing me. This is what this is what we're paying them for. This is what they're in office to to take care of. And I and I agree. If that's a tough subject, then 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 go take care of it. But can't you uh, can't you agree that there are some uh, more important things to take care of right now, like keeping American small businesses in operation, the backbone of America? House Energy and Hearing says broadband equity game stopped. Oh, House Financial Services hearing. We could use that financial services. That's part of our area. Game stopped. Who wins, loses, when short sellers, social media, retail investors collide? Part three. Really? Important? Oh, yeah, it, it is important. And this is the part three, and you haven't still got anything done with it. So you're going to go into part three and do what? Talk about GameStop and, and the stock markets. That's cool. But remember this. As you're doing that, small businesses are going out. Where you could have already went to the floor... March 1st, two months ago. Because you know you could have went last year and went to the floor and taken care of our needs as the American people in a day. Guzman can get with the Treasury, the, sec the, the, the Treasury Secretary, just like Carranza did. Mnuchin, Guzman can get with the Treasury Secretary of, and, and say, let's get the money out. And they can do it with a flip of a button. We know where the money went to. They all got $1,000. Boom. Make sure everybody's loaded up with the rest of the nine. Let's get, move forward. Any fraud, go find it. I'm, I'm game for that. Go find the fraud afterwards. First, take care of, their, care of the American people first. And now I'm getting upset and frustrating my words. I feel like Joe Biden. I can't talk right. That's one thing I like about Joe Biden is, yeah, he, he mumbles his words. I kind of like that because so, sometimes so do I. It brings it more to reality. Like, so the guy doesn't exactly say what he wants to say half the time he's like well, well i do that sometimes too i get that joe i'm not accusing you of that uh but i am accusing you of not knowing what's going on with s513 right now you need to do that because trump didn't know crap either about s5 s4227 he did nothing for eight months shame on you donald shame on you marco rubio because i think you did s31331 in there now, here we go. USDA Rural Development Mission Appropriations. Fiscal year 2022 budget hearing for the commerce. Uh, voting ballots. Uh, potential voter pur list purges interfere. Free fair access to trade polls. Stakeholders and perspective addressing migration push factors. Addressing the impact of COVID-19 on students with disabilities. I get that. But really, we need the cash. <laughs> Ship and submarine maintenance. Sustaining. Sustainment considerations for a changing fleet. This is what's going on today, people. It kind of makes me mad. Topics that really don't hit the heart of America. They really don't. They hit they 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 hit the uh, the mindset and try to throw you into a different like look over here when we're doing this when we're doing this over here or look over here because we're not doing this over here. You guys, this is it. This is what it is. I mean, let let's call a duck a duck. Let's start being a little bit more real with things and um, jump back into reality that that our Congress and senators are failing us miserably miserably so no the s513 is not going to the floor this week unless some mir miraculous thing happened with schumer and, and and uh and god meets him in his room or something i don't know but i do know this we need sweep the floor new house new senate give it to me give it to me now give guzman somebody that she can trust somebody that she can use somebody who has the small businesses backs guzman go behind their backs because they don't have your back and they don't have mine and they don't have the the 20,000 watchers that are going to watch this or whatever by the end of the day or by the end of the week, who knows? But I'm just saying, when are we going to literally fix this? When are, do we even, do we even want to fix it? Do, are they even trying to fix it? No, they're not. <laughs> What's the good news? What's the breaking good news? There's not any people. That's the problem. Now, tomorrow we're having a senator, a progressive senator, come onto the show. I, I don't, everybody knows politicians usually are, are like my worst, speak and see's worst enemy. Uh, we, we say, you should run for president and speak. And I'm like, yeah, you can kiss, 
nah, ain't happening. Because I would never want to even give them a chance to thwart my mind, to nothing to, to change the reality of my thinking and, and go into their world. No way. But we're having a, uh, a progressive senator, somebody who's going to be trying to, are going to unseat Mark Rubio tomorrow. And we're going to go over the topic of what he would do for you about this mess that, that has been made in the small business realm. What he would do for you. His name is Alan Ellison. And he's running for Senate here in Florida. And he has a, he knows what we're going through. He says he knows what we're going through and we're going to give him a chance to, to, to speak up on it because we don't have anybody out there right now that is speaking up on it who we voted in. And you know what? If the person that you voted in is not going to speak up, vote them out. Quick. Get rid of them quick. And I am talking to you, Rubio. Unseat you quickly. You are gone, my friend. The cavalry is coming. And his name might be Alan Ellison leading the charge. We can ask him, Alan, would you put S513 on the floor? Yeah or nay? What's one of the first things you would do for the small businesses in America? You're in. Get the other bum out. He ain't doing nothing for us. He's more concentrated on that China thing. Rubio is just concentrated on, on and I get that. Stay, stay focused on China. Rubio, go get, go get a, uh, another job concentrating on you know, national affairs or, or go into the military or something, become a general or a colonel. You'd make a great colonel over the United States military. I understand that. You protect us from China. I like that. But as far as small businesses, you've got your hand in too many pots here. And the small businesses just ain't, you ain't reaching us. I get it. You're human. You can only do so much. But nah, we've given you what we've given Rubio what the time he's needed and, and should have, have uh, at least explained to us what's going on. And he has he hasn't done nothing. So Alan Ellison's going to be here tomorrow night or tomorrow around five. I think we're going to go online and we're going to let him shout out to you guys and let you know what you have to look forward to do in the future as far as our representatives go, because the state, the present state of our, our local and state officials, congressmen, women, Senate, all of them, they ain't hearing you. They ain't hearing us, but we'll find somebody who will. Guys, like, subscribe, and I will get back with you later when there's more information to get back with you with. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye. Somebody, give it to me. Somebody, give it to me. Somebody.